So my husband, unfortunately, can't be here tonight. He's out of town on business. But my husband, over the years, has given me many gifts. But there are three that top the list. First are my three beloved daughters. Second is my 36-year partnership with him. And third is he introduced me to Ampat. My husband was CEO for Dowager Sciences, and he came home one evening after meeting with Bob and Joe, and he casually said, Tonya, there's this work going on in Kenya. I think you might be interested in it. Why don't you check it out? Little did he know where that would lead. <laughs> in 2015, I made my first trip to Eldoret, and I had the immense privilege of meeting Sarah Ellen Mamlin. And anyone who knows Sarah Ellen knows that you don't leave an encounter with Sarah Ellen without having your soul changed. And mine was nonetheless changed. She was gracious with her time and allowed me to go along with her on her work in Eldoret. Most importantly, she, allowed, she arranged for me to visit the Eldoret Special School. The Eldoret Special School is a boarding school with children with disabilities. And, El and Sarah Ellen knew that I worked with people with disabilities here in the States. I lost my heart to the children and teachers at that school. I returned to Eldoret several times in, in the following years, and in each visit, I spent time at the Eldoret Special School. I loved those children. I got to watch them in their daily activities, play with them, laugh with them. And with each trip, I fell more in love. In addition, I got to spend time with the teachers, chatting with them and listening to them about how we could help the resources that they might need to better support these children. And I also persistently, every professional I met, North American or Kenyan, quizzed them about what happens to these children with disabilities. What are the resources? What's in the communities for them? And this, I got the same answer every time. Tonya, when you find out, let us know. I also was being told, you need to meet with Dr. Megan McHenry. She's doing early childhood development, and she might have some answers for you. So um, in 2019, I had lunch on a beautiful spring day um, with Megan McHenry and received another gift in my life, Megan McHenry. She is a remarkable young woman who's been doing work in Eldoret um, since she was a med student. I, um, we are currently partners um, in working with a ch uh, developing a neurodevelopmental clinic for children in Eldoret. But more importantly, we have a beautiful friendship. Megan graciously invited me to go along with her on a trip in December, where we met with professionals who were serving children with disabilities on the Kenyan coast. I got to spend time with her Kenyan team and also with Dr. Aaron Oyungu and heard their stories about working with families with, dis with children with disabilities. But on our way back from that trip, we toured Gertrude's Hospital, which is a, is a hospital for children with disabilities. And guys, it is spectacular. It is found in the heart of Nairobi, and it is just a beautiful facility. But it is only available to, to wealthy Kenyans and expats. So Megan and I ended our trip um, waiting on eating um, dinner at the restaurant rooftop um, for that midnight flight out of Nairobi, as many of you know. And as we brainstormed, and we chatted, and we dreamed, we dreamed big. And we got more and more excited because we realized what we needed, we needed a children's clinic. We needed a neurodevelopmental clinic for children with disabilities, public, in Eldoret, at MTRH. Little did we know how quickly our dream would blossom. And that was in large part due to the groundwork that Megan and her Kenya team had been laying for years before, and also our collaboration with the Kenyan partners. And with that, I'm going to turn the mic over to Megan, and she's going to tell you the rest of the story. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I first traveled to Kenya as a student in 2011. And by 2014, I found work with Dr. Erin Ayungu, who Tonya had mentioned, uh, focused on child development. Our first NIH-funded study was called Wazesha with Toto, which means to empower or lift up children. And that's what we hoped that our work would eventually turn into. But admittedly, I was mostly just focused on research at that time. And I'm embarrassed to admit how long it took me to ask, like, what happens with children with disabilities here in Eldoret? 
But when I did and found the answer, I realized that our research program alone was not going to be empowering or lifting up anyone. Dr. Yungu and I had dreamt of a clinic for children with disabilities, but it was a pipe dream. It was something that was maybe 20 or 30 years down the road. It was too big of a dream for just the two of us. But fast forward to that rooftop restaurant, um, Four Points, if anyone's there. Um, and I finally realized that it wasn't just the two of us. Um, not only did, was it clear that we had a strong and fierce advocate and dear friend, Antonia, but as we traveled around Kenya, we met others and we found partners who wanted to help lighten the load for us. So soon, we held barazas, which are community gatherings with village elders and chiefs. We hosted uh, movie screenings with teachers and community health workers to just start a conversation about disability in this setting. We developed and piloted an intervention for our uh, children with autism um, that was wildly successful from the parent's perspective. And we've had many, many conversations with families that care for a child with disability throughout Kenya just to learn from their experiences. I'm not like stoic or composed enough to be able to share any of their stories with you tonight without crying, but I will say that they have felt so, so alone. Like, if a child, there's a perception that a child with a disability is a curse, or like someone has sinned in some past um, and has caused this disability. Caring for a child with a disability is impossibly difficult. And even if the families are brave enough or strong enough to seek care, they often are met with misinformation or barriers that dwindle their hope. But we can help. So for example, earlier this summer, we had information sessions for families um, that had a child with autism. They were planned for an hour and a half, but allowed to go to two hours. But the sessions last for seven hours because the families just had so much they wanted to share. They had so many questions. And this was the first time that they had ever met any other families that had a child with a disability. So for them, this was like a new, sorry, my voice is shaking and it was going to happen. But for them, this was like a new beginning and one where they were no longer alone. So with this planning and the listening and partnering together that we did, we now have our dream that's turning into a reality. So the CEO of the referral hospital um, has given us a piece of land to build the clinic, which you can see a model of back there. And, um, and the clinic's name is gonna be Wazesho Toto because we think it actually can empower and lift up children in Kenya. And with the generous gift from Tim and Tonya Hassinger, we can start building the clinic in 2024. So, um, you know, with this, we feel like, you know, not only are these, you know, were we able to come together to work and help these families, but the families are just no longer going to be alone. Now, besides my own family, this has been like the greatest gift in my life. And everyone that we've met along the way who've given their time and expertise in helping us has been a gift. These children and their families are such a gift. They inspire us with their love and hope. And it sort of reminds us of the proverb that we at Ampath are so familiar with, which is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So for those of you who are joining us tonight um, or are new to Ampath, um, we invite you warmly to walk with us and join us and be a part of this gift. Asantini Sana. Thank you.